joining an Oakland Community Health Network webinar. For this presentation, please follow the adequate stated in the webinar code of conduct. We ask you to please keep your microphones muted. If you're on a computer, your microphone icon should have a slash through it. If it doesn't, your microphone is on. For those of you who called in by phone, you can mute and unmute by pressing star six. Uh, the chat message box is shown by clicking on the comment balloon, which is next to the uh, hand icon. Please use the chat message box to interact and ask questions during the presentation. Clicking on the three dots, uh, more options menu in, in the middle of the icon bar will bring up and down the more options pop-up menu. Clicking on the red phone icon will disconnect you from the webinar and you will need to sign in again to return to the webinar. If you put your hand up by clicking on the hand icon, remember to put your hand icon down by clicking again on the hand icon. You will want to hide the icon bar menu uh, say because it's in the way of the captions on the slides, just click anywhere on your screen, then don't move your mouse or touch your trackpad. To unhide it, just move your cursor or click on your trackpad again. This presentation is recorded and by participating in it, you are consenting to the recording of your participation in the webinar. We are now going to begin the webinar. Thanks for <coughs> attending. So is everybody muted? Okay, we will take questions and comments at the end of the presentation from the chat message box and then from the participants by phone. Welcome to our presentation, Voting on voting Absentee and Accessibility. I am Mark Jones. I'm a customer service specialist here at OCHN. I have a usually invisible disability of a severe mental health mis mood disorder. I'm here to let you know that voting matters. This webinar helps you uh, learn how to vote by Epstein ballot and know about your accessibility options at your voting location. First, I wanna answer who is bringing this webinar. Who is OCHN, Oakland Community Health Network? We provide services for 20, 28,000 adults and children with intellectual developmental disabilities, mental health concerns, and substance use disorders. Its mission is to inspire hope, empower people, and strengthen communities. Secondly, I wanted to answer the question, who is this webinar for? This presentation is for anyone and everybody who have or doesn't have a disability and is interested in voting. The who is all of you. Now Betty will answer some of the questions of why vote. Thank you, Mark. Hello, my name is Betty Ruiz. I'm an advocate and author of two books and a member of the Society. You're right, voting is a right. Every United States citizen who is 18 years or older has the right to vote. Why vote? You can influence change and make a positive difference by voting. You have a role as an advocate for yourself. Make your voice heard. Your voice matters and your vote counts. Our previous webinar, Voting 101, Your Voice Matters, covered some basic information about voting. Additionally, we host the webinar, Voting is Advocacy. Some of the topics we covered in the Voting 101 webinar were why your vote matters, important voting dates, deadlines for registering, how to register to vote, and absentee voting. We also briefly went over some of these topics at the end of the presentation, Voting as Advocacy. Other topics covered in the Voting 101 webinar were the voting process, assistance with voting featuring the voter assist terminals, rights as voters in Michigan, and online voting resources. 
These webinars were recorded and can be assessed, assessed from the OCHN website, which is www.oaklandchn.org. Next slide, please. Voting is an important part of advocacy as referenced in the Voting is Advocacy webinar. It is not just letters and calling legislators. It is making your voice heard to bring about change and to make things better. Everyone's vote counts. One vote makes a difference. Remember, your votes adds up. Next slide, please. Next slide. Laws that protect your right to vote. Whether you vote at the polls or by absentee ballot, voting is a right. If you want the candidate of your choice to win the election, it is important that you vote and make your voice heard. Many people with disabilities do not vote. They want to vote, but many are afraid because of challenges they may face, such as resources and because special accommodations are required. There are several laws in place to specifically protect your right to vote. The Americans with Disability Act of 1990 or the ADA requires that public accommodations be accessible to those having a physical disability. All polling places are required to be ADA compliant. For instance, to accommodate the disabled, the polling place may have extra wide doorways, ramps for steps, adequate lighting, the voting station may be expandable, and the voting station may enable a person to vote while sitting down. The Voters' Rights Act of 1965 allows a voter who is blind or who has another disability to receive assistance from a person of the voter's choice at the polls. This person can be anyone except an employer or its agent, or an officer or agent of a union that you belong to. The Voting Accessibility for the Elderly and Handicapped Act of 1984 requires that all polling places must be accessible to all individuals with disabilities or elderly. Next slide, please. As some of you may know, the ADA recently celebrated its 30th year anniversary. In this video, members of the ADA Great Lakes community give their thanks to the impact the ADA has had on their lives. There's no sound. No, I'm going to back up a slide and see whether we can start this over. Sorry about that. Please join us as we listen to 
Go ahead, Betty. Are you muted, Betty? Oh. Your voice, your vote is not only meant to be a thumbs up. Here it means much more. Your voice, your vote makes a difference to your neighbors, your community, and society. Several of the people who appeared in the video talked about the ADA providing an opportunity to shape our future to which we can contribute by voting. This is one of the reasons ensuring accessibility to voting is a key feature of the ADA. Now Mark will go over some important details about the upcoming election in November. Thank you, Betty. The results of the primary elections determine who's on the ballot for the November general election. As you know, there was a presidential primary election on March 10th of this year. The citizens of Michigan voted on who they would like to see on their ballot for president in the November election. The actual candidates are determined at each party's convention. Most of the contests in the state primary were for the U.S. House of Representatives seats and for offices in the state of Michigan, as well as local elections. On the next slide, I will share with you the results from the recent primary election, which took place on August 4th. The general election on Tuesday, November 3rd, is when citizens throughout the country vote for who they want in office at all levels, federal, state, and local. Just another reminder, we will be voting for our choice of president in the November election. In Oakland County, these were some of the results of the primary election. I'm going to talk to you about the Oakland County candidates and important voting dates. Listed are the candidates for Oakland County after the primary election earlier in August. For Oakland County Executive, we have Dave Coulter, Democrat, he's the incumbent, and Mike Cowell, who is the Republican. For Oakland County Prosecuting Attorney, we have Karen McDonald, who's a Democrat, and we have Lynn Getz, who's a Republican. For Oakland County Sheriff, we have former state, our state Senator Vincent Gregory, a Democrat, and we have the incumbent uh, 
Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard. For Oakland County Clerk, Register of Deeds, we have Lisa Brown, who's a Democrat, and we have Tina Barden, who's a Republican. For Oakland County Water Resource Commissioner, we have Jim Nash, and then as a Democrat, and Jim Stevens is a Republican. In the subsequent OCH voting webinar, we will go over some of the other races that will be on the November ballot, like Michigan House of Representatives, state Senate races, and U.S. congressional races. There are some important deadlines if you are planning on voting and you are not registered at the address where you reside, particularly if you plan to register to vote in any other way than in person with your local city or township clerk. If you want to register by mail, online, at the Secretary of State's office, or with Oakland County Clerk, you will need to register by October 19th for the general election and November 3rd. However, if you have proof of residency, like your state ID or driver's license, you can always register in person at your local city or township clerk up to 8 p.m. of the actual day of the election. These are the requirements to register to vote in Michigan. You need to be a Michigan resident at the time you register, a resident of the city or township for at least 30 days by time you vote. You must be a U.S. citizen and at least 18 years of age at the time you vote. Additionally, you must not currently be serving a sentence or jail in person. However, a person awaiting arraignment and not yet convicted of a crime can vote by absentee ballot. Felons in Michigan can vote once they have served their sentence. Only Kentucky and Iowa do not restore the voting rights of felons. If you meet all the requirements to register to vote, you can then register in a variety of ways. You can be registered to vote at the Secretary of State when you renew your driver's license or state ID and change your address on either of them. You can also register online at the website resources listed in the end of this presentation. You can register at the Oakland County Clerk's Office in Pontiac, and you can always register to vote at your local city or township clerk. You can find out the contact information for your local city or township clerk on the websites listed in the end of this presentation. A question you may have is what do you do if you are moving at the time of an election? You can vote at your previous polling place one last time, or by planning an account ahead, you can put in an application to vote using an absentee ballot. I will be reviewing absentee voting on the next slide. Absentee voting. All eligible and registered voters in Michigan may request an absentee voter ballot. There's an application, which is a request for the absentee ballot, and then there's the actual absentee ballot itself. Requests to have an absentee voter ballot mailed to you must be received by your clerk no later than 5 p.m. the Friday before the election. The Friday before November 3rd is October 30th. You can register and apply for an absentee voter ballot at the same time. After receiving your absentee voter ballot, you have until 8 p.m. on election day to complete the ballot and return it to the clerk's office. Many clerk's office have uh, drop boxes that you can put them in if you don't think your mail is gonna get there soon enough. Now we will have a video about the absentee voting process. This video is from the Detroit Free Press and made in conjunction with the Livonia City Clerk's Office.
Hey, Mark, we can't hear the video very, very no. faintly. Okay, then we're having trouble with that. Let me uh, pause it for a second. And then I'll change my uh, settings. Okay. Can you hear that better now? It's very little. Machines I'm walking past 
past here are ones that are used on election day. These will be out in the precinct. They are getting ready right now with supplies to go out in two weeks. So now a received ballot is brought into a, another room, secure room, where we then take the ballots that have been filed and sorted. We then look at them, make sure, and we interfile them amongst the other ones from that precinct in the order by ballot. It is now the day before election day. We are getting ready to take the ballots upstairs to what's called the counting board. And a counting board is a group of people that work on election day that process the absentee ballot. It is made up of a mixture of Republicans and Democrats. So we have everybody here monitoring the situation. So we take the ballots upstairs. Once again, the ballots are checked again to make sure there is a signature and the signature matches and that the right amount of ballots for that precinct match up to a report that is generated from QVF, which is Qualified Voter File from the Secretary of State's office. We have to match every ballot. We have to be accountable to zero. We cannot have a plus or minus. So it's very important that everything is filed in order perfectly that we can pull it and it can be looked at against another report. Now your ballot is ready to be opened up. We have high-speed letter openers that will be in each county board. The county board will then put the ballots, someone in the county board will put the ballots inside the letter opener, and we turn it on. Now the envelopes are open. Now that the envelopes have been opened and we have confirmed that the right ballot is inside the correct envelope and they are in batches, we now get ready to scan. There is nothing on this screen that gives any information of what is voted for. All this is giving us is the quantity of ballots, not what is on the ballot. So now we are ready to scan. Now the software for this system is approximately $20,000. This software will pick up every ambiguous mark. If you start your ballot voting one way, if you circle and then change it to a check mark or you change your pen type, the software could pick that up and then we will look at the ballot to make sure that everything is okay on it. This software is very, very sensitive. So now the ballots have been received. I will accept this batch. This batch has been put in and now we're ready for the next batch to run. There is no tabulation until we are completely finished running every ballot through. And finishing of the absentee ballots could be Tuesday evening, early Wednesday morning, and hopefully not Wednesday afternoon. But we will finish as soon as we can. But there is a lot of detail to this and we want to make sure we do it right. We're not in for speed. We want to make sure everything is done correctly. We have now finished counting all the ballots. We have tabulated and we have our results. Once we have our results, we will call the county clerk's office. Clerk Garrett and her staff, we give them the results. We also transmit them down to them. At this point, we not only are we talking to them, but we have been in constant contact with Clerk Garrett and her staff throughout the election day and the whole process, they are available to us at all times. Once we have transmitted down to them, I now have physical results. All the hard copy results are sealed up, put in boxes and with the police escorts. I bring them downtown to the county clerk's office, to Clerk Garrett's office, and I hand it over to them. And now we are done with our process at this point. I have now walked you through an absentee ballot process. Now Betty will go over the voting process. Thank you, Mark. When you vote, first you must mark your ballot. You can get assistance with this either from a person or by assistive technology. Second, you must place your completed ballot in the secrecy envelope. Absentee voters, 
must use the absentee voter secrecy envelope, which was mailed to you with the ballot. Third, return the ballot to the de designated person, insert the ballot into the counting machine. Absentee voters must return their ballot to the clerk's office in person or by mail. And finally, congratulate yourself and be proud. You have just voted and made your voice heard. Voting assistance is available. There are people to help you vote if you request it. Every polling place has workers from both major parties who can assist you or you can use your own person. There are also ballot marking systems that enable you to vote independently. Often, you can do it yourself with assistive technology, like the Hot Touch Writer or the ES and S Voter Assist Terminals. Now, we are going to hear a little more about Voter Assist Terminals. Next slide, please. Voter assist terminals are used for the privacy and accessibility of voters who have a disability. Oakland County polling places use the hot touch writer machine. Macomb County uses the express vote machine and Wayne County uses the Dominion voting system. Please tell an election worker if you need to use a voter assist terminal. You do not have to call ahead to make sure your polling place has them. Every polling place should have a voter assist terminal. This next video demonstrates how the hot touch writer voting machine works. Mark, can you increase the volume a little bit on this too? I have it as high as it can go. All, mostly what I can do is keep the subtitles going. I'm sorry. That sounds good, thanks. The rights of voters. If you do require assistance at the polls, you may request help in advance by notifying the clerk's office. You can locate your clerk's office on one of the voting websites that we will discuss later in this training. Hearing impaired residents can direct questions they might have to the Department of State's Bureau of Elections. The email address for that department is elections at michigan.gov. Please don't hesitate to vote. Your voice, your vote matters. Now Mark will go over some online resources about voting in Michigan. These are some helpful voting resources for you. State of Michigan website, which is www.michigan.gov backslash vote, or actually it's a forward slash vote. Uh, you can find your local clerk and polling location as well as watch videos about voting equipment like the one we just saw. You can learn how to register and much, much more. 
uh, the Oakland County Clerk, which is www.oakgov.com forward slash clerk rod. You can register to vote and find your polling location. They are located at 1200 North Telegraph Road, Building 12 East, Pontiac, Michigan 48341. Their phone number is 1-888-350-0900. And then there is the League of Women Voters, www.lwvimi.org. You can educate yourself about important voting issues and learn more about voting. These resources can help you answer individualized questions like, am I actually registered to vote at my current address? Who is my city and township clerk? And what is their phone number and where is their office? Where is my polling location? and tell you how to register, for instance, what do I need to register to vote, as well as how to register, or how to request an absentee voter ballot. The links to these resources are on the OCHN website, which I will go over how to get to on the next few slides. To go to the Oakland Community Health Network website, you go to www.oaklandchn.org. From the menu across the top, mouse over the Advocacy tab towards the right side of the page. Then from the drop-down menu, you select 2020 Elections. You can then click on links on the page for important handouts and websites, like links to the page for the OCHN webinars, voting webinars, important dates to remember, reasons to vote, the voting process, this has the online voting resources listed on the previous slide on the bottom of the page. Rights of Voters with Disabilities, the Respectability Voters Guide, League of Women's Voters, Michigan Chapter, and Candidate Interviews by OaklandCountyTimes.com or OaklandCounty115.com. To view v previous voting webinars, mouse over the News and Events tab towards the middle of the page and then select from the drop down menu Voting Webinars. You can click on the YouTube video link of your favorite OCHN virtual voting webinar. This is also the page to find the URL links and the conference call and information for the subsequent OCHN virtual voting webinar in September. From the OCHN Voting Virtual Webinars, you can then click on the YouTube video links viewing Voting 101 webinar or on the links of the other upcoming OCHN voting webinars. You can also find OCHN webinars by Googling OCHN YouTube and select the resulting Oakland County Community Health Network YouTube. Click on the video tab and the voting webinars will be some of the first view videos on that section. Persons with smartphones like an Apple iPhone or an Android phone can also access these videos by opening a web browser on your app like Apple's Safari or Google's Chrome and searching with the keywords OCHN Webinar Voting. The OCHN virtual voting webinars are on the third Wednesday of the month from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Candidate positions and views are on Wednesday, September 16th. We will look at how to find out more about candidates and where they stand on issues that are important to you and look at some of the important races in Oakland County. You can join the URL links for these webinars by going to the OCHN Voting Virtual Webinars page I just told you about under the News and Events tab, or you can call in using the conference call in information on the same page. This now concludes the presentation portion of the voting absentee and accessibility webinar. We will now be taking questions and comments from the participants. First, we will take question or comments from the chat message box and then take verbal questions from participants, whether they have raised their hands or put in the chat they wanted to take a question or they have unmuted their uh, microphone on the telephone. For those of you who have joined us by phone, you can mute and unmute by pressing star six. So is there any uh, messages or any um, questions in the um, chat? 
Suzanne. I am not seeing any questions. I just see a comment from Amanda. She said, thank you for the resources. And I'm just messaging you. Great job, Mark and Betty. Very okay. thorough. Good information. It looks like Amanda has her hand raised. So if you want to go ahead and unmute Amanda and ask your question or make your comment. Yes. So I was looking um, if like last year um, or a couple of years ago when I went to the voting place, um, I was not yet in customer service, but I did notice that um, there was a lady that came in and did ask to use um, one of the voter assisting machines. Um, and, and at that time, they didn't even have it set up yet. And so the lady ended up waiting a really long time before she could even use it and was setting it up. And they had all these issues with setting it up. Um, and I just felt really bad for her because I was thinking, yeah. well, they already should have had that set up. I was wondering if somebody came across some issues during the voting um, process. Do you know who would be the best person to kind of write about the issues just so we can keep our county informed of, you know, how the voting process is going for those? You would first write your city or township clerk as oh. well as you're able to write the, uh, the county clerk and in Pontiac, trying to let them know of those problems, right? And and we did say that you didn't need to call ahead for a voter assist terminal, but given what you're telling us, it might be a good idea to call ahead and make sure that there is the one there set up at your precinct that you're supposed to go to. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that um, that they do try to call ahead, just because I did see that instance and I and I felt bad for the lady, so. Um, yeah, calling ahead might be smart, unfortunately. They're supposed to have them all set up, but, you know, just so you can save yourself some trouble, definitely. Thank you so much for that yep, Thank you, Amanda. Is there anybody else? Okay, well, I don't for, see any other oh, messages ahead. in the. I just I didn't see any other messages in the chat. And Amanda, mm -hmm. you're all set. I just I see your hand still raised. I can put your hand down for you if you're all set. Oh, you're good now. Okay, yeah, I think we're. I don't see any other questions. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming to our voting webinar. Uh, if you do think of a question later on, uh, you can certainly call customer service at one eight hundred three four one. 2003 that's for people on the phone 1-800-341-2003 between the hours of 8 a.m and 4 30 p.m uh, you can ask for me and if i don't know the answer to your question i will certainly research it and be able to get back to you uh, thank you for for attending voting absentee and accessibility webinar brought to you by oakland community health network get out your word your vote matters Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Betty. And have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Great job, Mark and Betty. Thank you.